So this is an interesting one that I've been asked several times, and um, thanks to uh, my friend at the Black Tower and me, um, although he he did most of it, I do got to give him credit for this, but we have dissected, or decoded, the Amulet of Ur. So the Amulet of Ur is what is worn around the neck when you are going through the Simon Necronomicon gatewalking system, and it is the seal for the Gate of Arzir. It is the first tool that you are to make, arguably, that... Oh, yeah, I would say that first, and then the Agamasaratu, or the Bull of the Watcher. But I'm getting a little bit off topic here. I do that a lot. Anyway, so it's also worn around the wrist when you are performing um, rituals of calling or invocations. And, you know, I've gotten emails saying, anybody know what all those symbols mean? Because I can't figure them out anywhere. And so we're going to be going through a couple of those. The interesting thing is that the, um, the amulet itself kind of gives you instructions on how to consecrate it just by the symbolism on it. So let's get into it. So as we begin to dissect the and decode the amulet of Ur, we're going to start at the bottom. That symbol that looks like a three that I put Ishtar next to, Ishtar or Inanna, go ahead, take your pick. Um, for one thing, she is known as the Queen of Heaven and Earth, and she has also been in the Underworld, so it's interesting that it kind of looks like a three and that, it's, and that she has been on those three places. It's also symbolic of her three faces, you know, Maiden Mother Crone, that kind, that kind of thing. And, uh, and you can also find this symbol on the, um, on the front lid of calling in the middle, which is to demonstrate that, you know, a lot of these workings surround Inanna. It's the same reason why the Magan text, if you add up all the lines, you can, you can get down to the number 15 because that's sacred to Inanna. Remember the gate in the gate walking, we are following in Inanna's footsteps. So it's no wonder that her symbol is on the amulet of Ur. Let's also remember that the amulet of Ur means seal, sealing. Not, not like what's above your head, but the act of sealing something. So then if we go up to the left, we have Tet or Teth. Can't remember exactly how to pronounce it, but that's the a Phoenician letter. It's also, that symbol is also symbolic of Malkuth, which is the um, lowest Sephiro, which also is the earth. It's the physical plane that we reside on right now where you are working from. Then, if we go up to the left, we have Natig, which is the, it's the constellation Scorpio. Then, to the right, we have Mala, which is one of the 50. It's symbolic of courage. It brings courage. Then, if we go to the top symbol, we have Gamlu, which, if you look into it, we dug through constellations to kind of see which one this could be. It's known as like the Shepherd's Crook, I think. If I can check this out real quick. It's the Scimitar or the Crook, and it's associated with Auriga. Now, the interesting thing is that Scorpio is, as we know, it's in the month of November to December. Now, Auriga is in the northern sky, at least around the months of February. So the interesting thing that I got to figure out is when is it not in the northern sky, but around the equator? So I'm actually waiting to see if something's going to open up here. Let's see. Do, do, do. It's the sixth. Let's see. First appeared in ancient times. Takes up 1.6% of the sky. At 657.4 square degrees. Let's see. It neighbors several constellations, some of which I cannot pronounce. And Auriga actually has many stars in it. Hmm. And three galaxies in it, which is, which is very interesting. So what I would gander is that given that it's in the northern sky around February on the months around February, perhaps it is more near the center of the equator earlier on in the year because, you know, the, the stars and stuff shift. I may do an update on 
this particular symbol of gum lu. So, what it's kind of telling us to do with this entire symbolism here is <clears throat> that you would have to in you would have to consecrate this after invoking or calling upon mala and also doing the the purification of of Ishtar, which you know you can do a ritualistic cleansing or a bath, it has to be under the the Auriga constellation during the time of Scorpio, and you are to face southwest, you know, towards that southwest wind that's mentioned in the Necronomicon, and whisper its name, just like any other seal, you whisper its name upon it, which is Ur through clenched teeth on this plane of existence, Malkuth, Kia, or the Earth, whatever you want to call it. So, really, all the clues are there, and I hope that this got a little interesting. I know that there were, sometimes I could have done a little bit more research, particularly on Gamlu and Natig, but maybe you guys could dig into it a little bit more, and let me know what you guys think about it. If you also look at the boxes, it is symbolic of a ziggurat or, you know, a layered temple. So it's a way of building up your own personal temple, the temple within yourself, because the amulet of sealing or amulet of Ur is symbolic of closing that gate between the inside and the outside, meaning those stars super far away and that barrier that's way out there and what's in here. You know, what's above it and what's below it. Also, and let's re remember that we'll, we'll take the Buddhist idea of thought here. The deep mind is also considered to be deep space. They're both considered to be the same thing. That deep conscious, deep subconscious, is also far, far out there. And this is symbolic of being able to have control over what, go what comes from the, the inside of you and then goes out outside. So being able to be in control of your own emotions, thoughts, and actions. So let me know what you guys think about my decoding of the Emulet of Ur. Remember, let's give my buddy at the Black Tower credit. You can find his YouTube channel. If you look on my channel page, it's in the suggested channels, and you could even look up his video, his videos through typing in the Black Tower. It's easier to search him if you type the Black Tower Necronomicon, and he looks at the Necronomicon system through a, a different lens than I do, which is why he's able to figure out some things that I haven't, and we really work as a team to figure this whole system out. So let me know what you guys think about this, and you can always shoot me an email at priestofthenecro at gmail.com. Remember, you can check out the rest of my Necronomicon playlist for more videos on how to work with the Necronomicon and perform the gatewalking. You can also check out my general magic playlist for how to learn basic magic skills, basic pagan skills. You can check out my Tulpomancy playlist for the metaphysical and psychological sides of, tul of egregores, Tulpomancy, fetches, and um, thought forms, and things like that. You can check out my Theories of Magic playlist for how magic functions within the confines of our universe. You can also check out my books on Amazon, Magical Theater, Guide to the Spheres and Beyond, Magical Mechanics, and Handy Sigil Magic. You can also check out my playlist called My Books, on a further explanation of all of those books. Remember, those are all on Amazon, and there's plenty of ways to communicate with me through my email and comments. And you can find all this stuff in the description below. So let me know what you guys think about this, and good hunting.